afternoon and welcome to the Nutra Medical Report. I'm Harley Schlanger and I will be doing the program today. Dr. Deagle is otherwise occupied, but it's an important day. There's a lot to cover. And I want to start by saying that there are many of you who over the last years have been asking, why is it we can't get rid of President Obama? With all the things he's done, all the crimes that have been committed, all the constitutional violations, why is he still in office? And up to this point, I'd say the answer is simply that he's been protected by the media, he's been protected by the Democratic Party, and he's been protected by the Republican Party. On top of that, the people who know that he should go, including many of you who listen to this program and other programs like it, have not done enough to get him out. But that's about to change. As you can see by the, the cascading of scandals, whether it's the, the fact that Eric Holder said it's not just the Associated Press they're spying on, but he said he's authorized many other cases where they've looked into uh, reporters to find out where leaks are coming from. That's one area that has to be probed, but that's a, that's a violation. This is an, uh, a use of the police state apparatus of the administration to silence opposition. Secondly, the IRS scandal. Now, this in itself, uh, now they're saying there were two rogues in the Cincinnati office, and if you believe that, you probably believe that a 29-year-old trader in Singapore brought down Barclays Bank by uh, a rogue trading operation. But this is an orchestrated operation. But people in the Tea Party and supporters of the Tea Party shouldn't get all upset about it. It's what you knew was going on. This has been going on against the LaRouche organization for years, including under Obama. But what it shows is the desperation to protect a president who's failing on every count. Now, the real impeachable violation has been the continuing cover-up on Benghazi. Now, I'm going to go through some points with you uh, starting in this first segment on Benghazi, which point to the constitutional violations by this president. It's not just that they ignored requests for more security. It's not just that after the attacks occurred, they didn't send planes or they didn't send other troops or they didn't mobilize potentially supportive Libyan militias. And it's not just that Susan Rice lied when she went on television. And we now know that the talking points were doctored, they were cha changed, uh, and they did represent an absolute and total lie that was known by Susan Rice and by the people who put her in there, probably the president himself. But the real issue on Benghazi, and this is something that the Republicans are refusing to go after, and that's why the party system itself is no good. The real issue is that Obama is in an alliance with al-Qaeda. Now, that's the real issue that ought to have people demanding that the president be impeached. The evidence is, is there. The report from Ambassador Stevens, who was murdered by al-Qaeda militia, he said that he's not safe. Now, what did he know? that the White House did not know. Well, what Stevens knew is that we were arming al-Qaeda forces to overthrow Gaddafi going back to the beginning of the uprising. That the so-called U.S. alliance with NATO against Gaddafi was an arming of a group called the Libyan Islamic Fighting Group. That was the main fighting force in Libya. And leaders of the Libyan Islamic Fighting Group had been, some of them had been in Guantanamo. Some of them we captured in Afghanistan. They were known jihadists with al-Qaeda connections going back to before the original 2001-9-11. And this was known. And when there was an attempt to have a debate on whether the United States should set up a no-fly zone to throw Gaddafi out, and to put these people in power. 
there was a collaboration between now Secretary of State John Kerry, who was then a Democratic senator, and Republican Senator John McCain to stop the Senate from having a hearing on whether Obama was violating the Constitution by committing U.S. troops and U.S. forces to a no-fly zone operation to overthrow Gaddafi. Now, under the Constitution, only the Congress has the power to declare war. The president may use emergency powers in case we are invaded or there's an insurrection in the United States. The War Powers Act was adopted to give the president a certain amount of flexibility if, in fact, there's an invasion or a coordinated terrorist attack against the United States. But even under the War Powers Act, he has 60 days to go to the Congress. President Obama never did that. And when a number of senators in both parties raised that issue, it was John McCain and John Kerry who stopped that from coming to a vote and let Obama continue to arm the Libyan terrorists, the al-Qaeda-linked Libyan terrorists, who ended up not only taking over the country, but were responsible for the assault on the U.S. consulate in Benghazi. Now, that is the issue that's being covered up, not just by Obama, but by the media and by the Republicans, because they're sticking to narrow talking points, which in some cases are aimed at Hillary Clinton in 2016. Now, here we have a possibility of a broader war in Syria, more U.S. spending in, in wars, uh, more support for terrorists who are attacking our interests. And that's happening right now. Why are you so worked up about Hillary in 2016? We should be organizing to get Obama out now. So the first point that I want you to take home with you and think about and discuss with your friends from today's program is that the United States under Obama is in a de facto alliance with al-Qaeda-linked terrorists in Libya and in Syria and probably in Afghanistan and Pakistan, as well as in Chechnya. That is the coordinating point of this international terrorism is not in those countries, but it's in a foreign power. And in the second segment, I'm going to tell you who exactly is running this and who's running President Obama. I know some of you think, well, he's just a militant jihadist. That's why he's supporting them. Forget it. Obama is not some revolutionary Muslim. He's a damaged personality with a psychopathology known as narcissism, where he loves himself and has no empathy for anyone else and will do whatever it takes to promote himself. And that's what he's doing. He's not promoting a cause. He's not promoting socialism or Islam. He's promoting Barack Obama. But he's being used by forces who are out to destroy the United States using terrorism and using financial warfare. And that's what's being protected by the media, which is tied to Wall Street. And that's what's being protected by Republicans like John McCain, who won't do an honest investigation of Benghazi because he supported putting in power the very terrorists who killed our ambassador. Shame, shame on John McCain for that. Yeah, exactly. And that's what trying we have to, be, to talk trying, about. So trying to cover him, isn't that right, Harley? Absolutely. And at this point, we've got to make sure that we get to the bottom of this, because this is an extremely dangerous situation now in Syria. Yeah, And they're trying to repeat the same thing in Syria that happened in Libya. Exactly. In fact, I read over the document that was put together by the Roos Foundation on the Articles of Impeachment. If you read yeah. this, sitting down, you could literally, it's so overwhelming you could faint. If this man is not removed from power, we are marching over the cliff. Financially, geopolitically, in every way, Obamacare, over the cliff. Back in a moment with Harry Schlanger. Welcome back, and 
Carly Schlanger. Carly, um, these articles that we're going to post up today are historic. Anybody listening to this program needs to copy the MP3, go to the the Roos Foundation, call you, and they can call at 800-922-2907 to get more information. We need a march, call, email, postcard, our senators and congressmen. This needs to be the takedown of not just Obama, but the entire administration, the beast, the whole system that has allowed and promulgated the destruction of America. As many Christian ministers have said, this is not the beginning of the end. This is the end of the beginning. Uh, if we don't remove Obama uh, with the Benghazi and all the other crimes that he has done and his administration and the extended family of, of monsters and devils, going right back to the city of London, a stand we call it, city of London, uh, our nation is doomed and the entire world is doomed because we're heading directly toward a very, very quick uh, access to World War Three. This so-called well, proxy we... war against Syria is not going to end with the takedown of the Syrian regime. It will be an air attack on Iran. This will be a full-fledged nuclear war with India, China, Russia involved, and it will be the end of civilization and the end of mankind on Earth. I think the important thing that, that I want to get across is that the aura of invincibility of Obama has been cracked. In the same way, as you remember back in uh, 1972, November 72, Nixon won a landslide. And he came back and he basically said he's going to get his enemies, he's going to do what he wants to do, he's going to cover up Watergate, which is a minor crime compared to Obama. Oh, yeah. And what happened is... And in that case, I have to say, you know, the Washington Post, I don't trust. Woodward, I don't trust. But a decision was made at a certain point that Nixon's paranoia was going to get in the way of any kind of stable government. And a decision was made at the top to get rid of him. And at that point, key Republicans went in and told Nixon it's time to go. Now, up to this point, we haven't seen a single Democrat break with this administration. Dennis Kucinich, who's no longer in the Congress, has come out very forcefully recently. There are a number of progressives who are attacking areas of Obama's policies, whether it's his attack on Social Security and Medicare, his drone policy, his right-to-kill policy. But the turning point was reached over the weekend on two things. The IRS issue actually reminded everyone of Nixon's enemies list. And and I'll tell you on this, Dr. Bill, it may very well be that Obama personally himself did not issue an order, but it's so clear from everything he said and done that people in the IRS bureaucracy would expect to be rewarded by going after his enemies, that that's what triggered it. And of course, it's called a presumptive dictatorship. It basically means this is the policy of this uh, Fourth Reich, and you're going to be rewarded if you crush your enemies, because... Yeah. The, 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 we have a corruptocracy. All the people that were issued, all the companies, including Nancy Pelosi's husband's billion-dollar companies that were given, issued waivers on Obamacare. Every contributor to Obama was not on the list for the IRS. What we have is a situation here where the, we have a, such a, a vile corruptocracy, a kleptocracy, a dictocracy, a rule, rule not of law, but a rule of rulemaking by a dictator. It is not surprising that they have a, a kind of a, a mental gestalt that this is how we do things. Well, and it's systemic within the administration. The idea that anybody who's against Obama is a bad person and has to be a target. But the other thing that was the turning point is when journalists saw that Obama would go after them. And that's, you know, Holder has recused himself because he said he has authorized many other cases of this kind of investigation of journalists. All of a sudden, the journalists who have been kissing Obama's rear end for five years, who have been running cover for him, uh, in some cases they've been on his payroll, but more often than not, they just fell under the sway of this mythology that was created about the great Barack, the one. What's happened is they realize he's just another sleazy dictator. And it's because he's goring their ox this time. So now we're seeing the media. I was really shocked to see on CNN 
uh, this, John King and others saying this is unacceptable. Uh, even Rachel Maddow, who basically looks like she's the, the biggest Obama bot on television, was saying you can't do this to journalists. Now, the point is the journalists should take a step back and realize they've been covering his lies as though they're the gospel. And they've been giving him this aura of invincibility. And it's the media that should be the guardian and uh, of, of our liberties. Now, here's the other point on this. Who has been targeted by Obama? It's whistleblowers. And the key thing about a whistleblower is that if you don't protect them and guarantee them anonymity and allow them access to media, then you're silencing people inside the operation who know where the crime is committed. And the Obama administration has been tougher against whistleblowers. They've been jailing them. Tougher against whistleblowers than even the Bush administration, which was supposedly a very vindictive administration. Look what so, they did with Benghazi with the survivors. They put them in hospital and put a gag order on them so they couldn't talk to the congressional committee or the media. Sure, and then, then you get this poor character, Jay Carney, who's like a pig on a spit right now, being roasted every time he steps out in front of a podium. So he ought to just, you know, if the Obama administration really cares about human beings, they should put him on ice for a couple of months, because this guy is finished. He's lied repeatedly. He's knowingly lied. He is still saying that there was nothing done with the talking points, even though these emails are out there. And now he's saying, well, if we knew about the emails, but that doesn't matter. He's in the wrong time zone. I mean, uh, wh where does he get off continuing lies that aren't even appropriate to the date? Well, there have been many press secretaries before who have gone down for these lies, and most of them end up writing uh, memoirs where they confess to their sins. Uh, one hopes that someone like Carney would, would have the decency to say, yes, I've been lying for a guy who I thought was the Messiah, and now I realize he's Satan himself. Yeah, or the Antichrist. So I, I think that the I would call him is, the false prophet of global collectivism. Uh, a, an amalgam between Sunni uh, Islam and the global banksters in the city of Londonistan. Well, and let's let's be even more precise because there are these colorations to him, but the actual source of his power comes from initially the George Soros, uh, Penny Pritzker uh, money bags, the Sadlers and others, who right. created a nonstop funding of illegal operations in the caucus states in 2008 to win him the nomination. And then once he got in, it was the Soros networks and the media uh, that protected him, that promoted him. Uh, it was the Democratic Party that went in lockstep with him. I think Hillary Clinton's ruined her career by, by turning it over to serving Obama. Yeah. Most definitely. Um good bad move on her part good for us her uh, chances in 2016 are deader than as day jacob marley's ghost back in a moment And uh, these articles are mind-blowing. Uh, let's continue. We've got uh, the, uh, <laughs> I love this article title, it says, Cornell West skewers the queen and her Obama pet. And, of course, you can see this a few years ago when, when he curtsied before this uh, diminutive queen uh, and, of course, also bowed before the Saudi Arabian king because this is what this monster is. He is literally a prancing prince of darkness, a pied piper, uh, and he's broken. And it's now becoming evident when he went after the media uh, that uh, Obama is on his way out. And he, by the way, the, the last thing he did was he basically said to the Democrats, I don't care if you can't get elected next year in the Senate. I'm Obama. I could give a, a whatever. And, uh, uh, that, and, uh, that's and, Dr. Deagle. You know, that is the characteristic of the narcissistic personality. It really is Everything dangerous. Everything is all about them. 
Right, and the thing is, we know now, in fact, I quoted this several times this week, that according to Michelle Shostodovsky in globalresearch.ca, he dug up documents to prove that 300 al-Qaeda terrorists were literally specifically sent through their CIA operatives running al-Qaeda and al-Nursa uh, subdivisions of, of, the, of these Muslim terrorists that are mortal enemies over to tie up loose ends because the ambassador wasn't going along with the transshipment of all these arms to do regime change in Syria. So he said, well, it's okay, we'll kill him or we'll exchange him for the blind sheikh. If he comes out, in fact, they actually try to rescue him and see if they can keep him alive because they want to exchange him for the blind sheikh who was supposedly charged in prison in America for the first attack in the World Trade Center, which was, by the way, run by the FBI again. And we can see that on the 19, uh, sorry, 1993 New Year's, uh, Christmas Eve editorial page in the New York Times. It's right there. You can actually see the admission. And it's like this idiot Obama, he tries to say it's allegations when it's actually confession. Does he well, know we the saw difference? It, we saw it, it again with the Boston bombing. The right. FBI and Homeland Security explicitly warned five days before the marathon that there could be something that takes place, like a bombing, at the finish line of the marathon. But they right. never told the Massachusetts or, or Boston authorities. So, you know, and in fact, we no, 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 there are five his... cases of so-called terrorist attacks that supposedly the FBI foiled. Every single one of them, the FBI was supplying the weapons and the, the well, uh, uh, fertilizer and the equipment for the bombing. Exactly. Christmas before last, Portland. This is another one where this young man, this Muslim, was being shepherded by an FBI officer, given the bomb materials to go down to a Christmas lighting ceremony to blow it up at the Christmas tree lighting in Portland, Oregon. Just Christmas before last. FBI totally involved with nursing this forward to a culmination of, you got terrorism, you got to have more Homeland Security and TSA. How criminal. Now, now what we did, what you're referring to on some of these articles, there is one on... Cornell West, and I think the most important one about that, Cornell West is an African-American professor who really got run out of Harvard by Larry Summers, and then he ended up at Princeton, but he came out in Great Britain, and he's a very erudite man. He, he sort of used Mark Antony's address to the crowd in Shakespeare's Julius Caesar, so are they all honorable men, as he was really uh-huh. talking about how dishonorable they were. Cornell right. West said, oh, we have a black president. Isn't that great? We're no longer a racist country. We now have full equality, and this is a brilliant black man. But, of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. he's also a war criminal. And then he goes after Obama for the drones. And then he says, and this brilliant black man is also a captive of the banks. He's ignoring black unemployment, homelessness. He's ignoring all these problems. And who's he helping? He's helping the banks, this honorable man. And so I think that oh, I was... I love that. That is the ultimate humor, the ultimate sarcasm, the ultimate editorialism always involves the dark sark, or as they call body humor of the ancient Greeks, where it cuts so deep, like an autopsy report, loading the organs onto the scale of justice, that you can't dispute it. It's just right in your face, isn't it? And it also causes you to say, well, does he really mean he's a brilliant black man? Because you know, it, it, it forces the well, mind sh- to recognize that what you're accepting is not true. Exactly. And, In other words, the whole misto, mythos, I call it the abominator with his teleprompters, he, he basically is a complete shadow man. We don't know who he is, if he's an American citizen. We, he never really published anything in the so-called law review. The man is a total fabrication. And literally, in fact, I'd say it's hard to say he was born. Maybe he was just spawned. That's how bad it is with this guy. And well, you know, he's got if someone nurse, said maybe he shouldn't be impeached, but just deported. <laughs> well, I think so. And I think the problem is it's not just him. You see, you cut out the head of this pimple on a blister on top of a giant abscess in the government. It's not there. It's just it's infiltrates through every department, including the bureaucracy, Democratic Party, uh, ACORN. This is not just Obama. We need to have a what I call a not just a radical removal of the Obama tumor, but we need to remove all secondary metastases and the things that caused it to exist, including, including uh, the Republican Party, which has been an impotent opponent. I think Exactly. On purpose impotent. Even when Daryl Issa did his, uh, his communications and his reviews of the situation in Benghazi, I was appalled by the fact that he made a comment that we aren't targeting Hillary Clinton. What? What? 
excuse me, if I was in the operating room and say, we're not targeting the tumor, we're going to take off the wrong finger or tongue or leg or whatever, that doesn't make sense. We're in the operating room. Let's remove the tumor. Well, don't the forget, tumor we also Hillary, said we're not the tumor targeting is Obama. Barack Obama. Yeah, well, we need to go all the way to the top because it's Barack Obama's policy. The buck stops there. If he isn't removed this time, there won't be a 2016 election. There'll just be a continuing dictatorship by a corruptocracy, a fear state where everybody is given specific uh, exclusions, like from Obamacare or from national security or from uh, homeland security. Uh, and uh, if you don't support him, the Fuhrer, you're considered a persona non grata. That's how bad this is going to get. Well, and that's when the economy why crashes, real terrorism starts. A bill, yeah. We drafted a bill of impeachment, which right. is on the LaRouche Pack website, and I think you're going to post it on your website. Yeah, we this have it right here. I have iron, this is an ironclad bill of indictment. That can I, I read some up. of it? To, can I read some of that bill, Bill? Because I want people to know sure. just how extensive it is. Impeachable offenses. Obama's impeachable offenses as defined by the constitutional standard of treason, bribery, or other high crimes and misdemeanors are by no means limited to the Benghazi atrocity. No kidding. That's my comment. LaRouche PAC first identified the leading elements of Obama's impeachable offenses in January 2010, focusing on the president's adoption of a genocidal health care plan, which was and is decided, de- de- dedicated to carrying out mass murder against the population of the United States as economic proposals such as the destruction of NASA that would destroy the economic basis for survival of the nation. In April 2011, former Assistant Deputy Attorney General under President Reagan, Bruce Fine, issued a draft bill of impeachment which charged the President with usurping the exclusive prerogative of Congress to commence war under Article 1, Section 8, Clause 11 of the Constitution. On October 29, 2011, constitutional law professor Francis Boyle offered to draft bills of impeachable offenses against Obama on the same basis as fine, plus uh, for the president's violation of the constitutional right to due process by killing at least three American citizens without due process of law. Since that time, evidence has arisen of uh, even more offenses and, most importantly, of other ways in which Obama has quote, acted in a manner contrary to his trust as president and subversive of the constitutional government to great prejudice of the cause of law and justice and to manifest injury to the people of the United States, end quote. That, by the way, was the standard used in the articles of impeachable impeachment filed against President Richard Nixon, which led him to resign rather than being convicted. Itemization. A draft outline of Obama's impeachable offenses in addition to the treasonable alliance with the British Saudi terrorists and is being exposed in the Benghazi case follows. Count 1 and 3 are prima facie and require no further investigation to make the case. Count 1. Violation of Article 1, Section 8. Constitutional provision that Congress has the unique responsibility to declare war through his preemptive uh, war against Libya without congressional approval. Count number 2 prosecution of aggressive war in pursuit of regime change in Libya, an action explicitly condemned as a war crime by the post-World War II Nuremberg Tribunal and its treaties signed by the United States. Count three, violation of the Fifth Amendment of the U.S. Constitution and Due Process Clause through the murder of American citizens including Anwar al-Awlaki, his 16-year-old son, and Samir Khan. We'll continue. Take on time, Obama. Time to go. Welcome back. Count number four for the abominator. Count number four, violation of the Fourth Amendment of the U.S. Constitution, the right of people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures through the expansion of the Bush Cheney program of warrantless and interception of electronic communications of millions of Americans. National Defense Authorization Act, a lying piece of crap. Obama said he didn't want it. Then when it was presented on his desk, he signed it. Uh, this is another example of the Expropriations Act, which means if you're a prepper and you prepper anything, they're going to grab your stuff at gunpoint. Then he says he's going to sign the United Nations. This is back in April last year. The United Nations Small Arms Treaty to choke off supply of arms. And Big Sister, his functionary at the Department of Homeland Security, is buying up calibers of bullets that they don't even use in the government, so even police departments across the country can't get adequate bullets to do their job. 
This is an obscenity beyond anything that's ever occurred in American history. And it's not just Obama that needs to be removed. We need to remove people like Nancy Pelosi, Homeland Security uh, Secretary Napolitano. We need to have all the corruptocracy removed from the various departments of the government. We need to get rid of the support by lobbying groups that, that want to lobby uh, the Obama administration for exclusions to Obamacare, to God knows what else. And, of course, we know now that even these so-called agencies that are supposed to be independent aren't independent at all. And they're now we now know that there is no such thing as a terror attack unless it happens during a drill. That's the formula. The formula is we're going to have a drill, we're going to have an advance notice, so we always have plausible deniability like the Boston Marathon disaster, like the first 9-11 attack where the FBI ran it, the second one where the CIA ran it with Israeli nuclear, micronuclear agents putting micronuclear bombs in the World Trade Center. I proved it six years ago. Proved it. This is not open to conjecture, anybody's damned opinion. Anybody out there who thinks, oh, Judy Wood, they use directed energy weapons or they use just super thermate. Super thermate's not a cutter. RDX is. High explosive cord. Micronuclear devices. You as Army Corps engineers. We have a government that, that now we're getting alerts that they're going to have a massive storm, a massive storm of terror attacks, and we guarantee it Obama and the functionaries behind him in the banks are just counting on blowing up stadiums, killing thousands of people, not just dozens, or cutting off their limbs, and bringing us down to a state where you'll beg for martial law. That's what, what Obama we wants need, next. What we need is the listeners to take the bill of impeachment that we posted. Take it to your congressman. Take it to your friends, to your church. Discuss it. Get people aware that not only is there a problem, because most people know there's a problem, but they don't know there's a recourse. What's happening now is that the aura of power is disappearing. And this is what happened to Richard Nixon in the summer of 1974, which led to his uh, really forced resignation. Now, we've got to get Obama out as quickly as possible. Because what he's otherwise going to do, he and Cameron, the British Prime Minister, laid out a strategy for, that included two things. One is, in Europe, the balance. That is, that right. they're going to steal the money from the banks. That is right. your money, your deposit. Your money. That's yeah, already you're an unsecured creditor. And, unsecured and, creditor. Isn't that obscene? Yeah, and yeah. secondly, they're prepared to launch a strike into Syria, which will include U.S. boots on the ground in one form or another. They probably won't admit it, but U.S. troops well, are training already them now there in Jordan. training people. Now, they're training them in see, Jordan. Did you see this video the other day of a Syrian rebel commander, one of the top rebel commanders, on a video eating the heart of a Syrian soldier that had been killed? And saying, exactly. I right. tell we talked you, about that with well, your hearts. We had, we actually saw that. We talked about that with Walid Shabat, who used to be a Palestinian terrorist. He's a Christian, an American. His son Theodore Shabat. He wrote it uh, with Ben Barak, the book, uh, "The Case for Islamophobia." These people are completely indwelt by Satan, and the people don't realize that the, that they're fully funded now by NATO and the West, our mortal enemies, and they want to bring terror, storms of terror across America. The Boston Marathon was just the opening shot, like at the at the race. We're going to have, this summer will be the summer of discontent. If we don't impeach Obama right now, we're going to have one terror attack after another until we'll beg to have black, uh, ski masked, uh, flak jacketed, fully automatic weapon carrying thugs on every street corner, and every bank, and every public stadium will, will beg to be abused by somebody with a TSA blue glove up our rectum and vagina and in every body cavity and we'll, we'll, we'll beg for them to keep us safe. That's what this administration, blankety blank blank administration, wants to do next. And I can guarantee you, know, we had uh, Super Bowl Steve a few years ago that made this uh, announcement that we're going to have a new, guess what? I spoke in 1997 to Special Forces Delta agents because I took care of them. I was one of their doctors for an entire week at a conference in Lake St. Louis. And they told me they've been doing a war game simulation of a nuke going off in this major stadium at a, at a Super Bowl for 35 years. And that was back then. And these things are literally war gamed out decades before Obama was even a junior senator in, in the state of Illinois. He's just a functionary. And because he's a narcissistic, mentally ill person, he's just the idiot that they stick out front so you can hate him. But just this like is the, the recent point. movie. We can just get like the recent movie with the. 
like there is a movie that that showed uh, Iron Man three, where the actor that was acting as the quote terrorist was just uh, a British actor. The real guy was a was a three piece suit guy that looked like your average you know lawyer or businessman. Uh, behind behind them are these freaking bankers that don't care if they kill hundreds of millions of people or start a nuclear war. Uh, they don't care if they destroy much of the planet. They don't care if they, kill, they end most of life on the planet. They've got their hotels, their grand pianos underground. They've got their supplies. They'll stay there decades if necessary until everybody dies or eat each, eat each other on the surface and they reemerge to a new world that they've got control. They just want control no matter what, even if they kill most of us. Yeah, but he's vulnerable now because the mistakes are piling up. They're desperate. They're in a situation where they're attacking their own supporters in the media. Yeah, yeah. That's amazing, isn't it? This is the hubris they have. He won't even meet with his own supporting groups, and he blows them off like they're, oh, I don't need to see you. I'm, not, I'm now the dictator for the next three years. And guess what? He's putting things in place that if there's any real big crisis, a bond market blowout, a major airborne plague, uh, a, a nuclear war in the Middle East, he'll just declare martial law. And guess what? There won't be any 2016. We'll be stuck with the bastard and his entire administration of the Fourth Reich. That's where we're going. And we got a window between now and the senatorial elections next year. If we don't impeach Obama, we are going into full-fledged Fourth Reich dictatorship. Full flesh. And, and that's why people should pick up the LarouchePack.com website, get those the, the the fact sheet on Libya, and get the the uh, impeachment bill of impeachment, and use it, organize it, bombard the Congress with it. We have the opportunity now to win this fight, and I don't want to hear people say, "Oh, you can't win, you can't win." You You're have giving to win. Up you have no choice. You, say that. you have no choice. If someone's smothering you, and they're a big person. And you know that if they keep smothering you, you're going to die. I don't care if you're a 120-pound housewife. You're going to scratch, kick, grab their nuts. You're going to do whatever you can, gouge their eyes out. You're going to get the GD hand off your mouth and your neck. That's where we're at right now. If we don't stop this, we're going to see our wives raped, our children dismembered. We're going to see radiation everywhere. We're going to see human sacrifice. We're going to see Muslims all over the country blowing up stadiums and shopping centers. And if people think, oh, that can't happen, we have the chief literally functionary of al nursa al-Qaeda right in the damn White House. We have a Muslim president who's helping, not even just a, a mild Muslim, it's just Muslim by, by decree because he was born that way. We have a Muslim extremist that's a narcissistic maniac that thinks he literally is, he's got a Messiah complex. He believes he's the Messiah going to bring peace to the world, but it's going to be a very cruel peace. Very cruel. Well, he's going to be given a chance to have some peace on his own in a cell somewhere because that's that's where this thing is heading. Yeah, he needs to, and he needs to go to prison. He needs to be in prison in a lock ward with no day passes. That's right. That's what right there do. beside Mr. Helter Skelter. Right there beside Mr. Helter Skelter that never gets a day pass. Well, it's 800-922-2907 if you want to talk to me about getting involved in this impeachment fight. We need to do this now. If you're listening and you're not taking action, shame on you. I will be. Shame on you if you don't take action on this. This is the most important issue I've spoke in decades. And if hearing this news today... This historic day, which is, by the way, the day after the 65th anniversary of the founding of the State of Israel. If we don't take this action today, we would be Israel lob their nukes in defense against al Nusra al-Qaeda and Hezbollah and the attack by NATO and America against the State of Israel by arming our enemies. And we will see World War III. Our cities will go up in fireballs of nuclear flame. That's where we're headed with this idiot. Impeachment now. Impeachment now.